Hello children, you must have learned autotropic mode of nutrition given in the first part of the chapter nutrition in plants. Autotropic mode of nutrition requires chlorophyll but there are some plants which do not have chlorophyll. They cannot synthesize their food. Then how do they survive and from where do they derive their nutrition? We will get answers to all these questions in this presentation. Like humans and animals, such plants depend on the food produced by other plants. This mode of nutrition is called heterotropic mode of nutrition. The word heteros means other and tropos means nourishment. It is a mode of nutrition in which organisms cannot prepare their own food and depend on plants for their food. The organisms having this type of nutrition are called heterotrophs. Most animals like herbivores, carnivores or omnivores and a few plants have heterotropic nutrition. There are four types of heterotropic plants. First is saprophytic plants, second is parasitic plants, third is insectivorous plants and fourth is symbiotic plants. We will discuss them one by one. First saprophytic plants. The mode of nutrition in which organisms take the nutrients in solution form from dead and decaying organic matter is called saprotropic nutrition and the plants which use saprotropic mode of nutrition are called saprotrops or saprophytic plants. They secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter and convert it into a solution and then absorb it. Examples fungus like mushrooms, bread molds, yeasts, Indian pipe plant and some orchids which are given in the figure. Many fung fungi like yeast and mushroom are useful and some fungi causes diseases in plants, animals and human which are shown in the figure. The tiny spores of fungi are always present in air. They germinate and grow on leather items, pickles, clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for a long time. Now this is an activity to see the fungus or the growth of fungus on the piece on the piece of a bread. Now we take a piece of bread and put some water on it after two to three days we observe white green or brown patches on the braid under microscope we will find thread like structures of fungus now the next we have parasitic plants they are the plants which do not have chlorophyll and cannot prepare their food one example is cascuta or amarbel it takes the ready-made food prepared by the plant on which it is climbing. The plant on which it climbs is called a host. Since it deprives the host of valuable nutrients, it is called a parasite. Now they develop special roots called sucking roots or hostoria, which penetrate into the tissues of the host plant and suck food material from the host, which is shown in the figure. The prepared food or the nutrients is generally absorbed from the root or stem of the host plant. In the figure, we can see the yellow tubular structures twinning around the stem and branches of a tree. This is Amarbel. Now there are some more examples like Rafflesia, which is the largest flower and mistletoe 
which is a partial parasite. Generally, they grow on mango tree and teak. It has chlorophyll and makes some of its food but depends on host plant for water and certain nutrients. Next we have insectivorous plants. Insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants or carnivorous plants. They derive some or most of their nutrients by trapping and consuming animals, mainly insects. These plants are usually green in color so they can make their own food but lack nitrogen element. These plants grow in nitrogen deficient plant soil so they eat up the insects for their nitrogen requirement. They are called partial heterotrophs because they can synthesize their own food but fulfill their nitrogen deficiency by eating insects. One example is pitcher plant, Nepenthes. Now, in a pitcher plant, leaf is modified into a pitcher-like structure and its apex forms the lid that can open and close the mouth of pitcher. Inside the pitcher, hairs are present. When the insect lands in the pitcher, the lid closes and the insects get entangled in the hairs. The insect is digested by the digestive juices present in the pitcher. The only species found in India is Nepenthes khasiana which is found in Meghalaya. Some other examples are sundew, bladderwort, venus flytrap, which is given in the next figure. Next we have symbiotic plants. Sometimes Two plants of different species live together and help each other in obtaining food and shelter. This association is called symbiosis and such plants are called symbiotic plants. The mutual relationship in which two different organisms live together and share the shelter and nutrients is called symbiotic relationship. First example is lichens. These are made up of algae and fungus. The fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to the algae and in return the algae provides food which it prepares by photosynthesis. Second example is roots of leguminous plants and rhizobium bacteria. Rhizobium converts atmospheric nitrogen into soluble forms. The plant in turn provides nutrient for bacteria's growth. Children, do you know why farmers are using manures and fertilizers in the fields or the gardeners using them in lawns or in pots? They are added to increase the nutrients in the soil which are lost because plants absorb mineral nutrients from the soil. The most common nutrients for plants are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They need to be added time to time to enrich the soil. Crops require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins. After the harvest, the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen. Plants cannot use the nitrogen gas available in the atmosphere directly as they are using carbon dioxide. Rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules of leguminous plants convert nitrogen gas from atmosphere into water soluble nitrogen compounds as shown in the figure. This process is called nitrogen fixation. Leguminous plants include peas, gram, moong and other pulses. Now when such plants die and decay, the nitrogenous substances mix into the soil other plants absorb these substances and use them to make proteins. There is no need to add nitrogenous fertilizers in the soil in which leguminous plants are grown. So, the fertility of the soil can be increased by three ways. First, by adding manures. And we know manures 
uh, are decomposed plant and animal waste by adding chemical fertilizers such as urea or NPK by growing leguminous plants after growing crops such as wheat or rice this practice is called crop rotation which you will learn in higher classes now let's summarize the topic heterotropic plants include parasitic saprophytic insectivorous and symbiotic plants saprophytic plants depend on dead and decaying matter parasitic plants depend on another green plant called host insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants they grow in nitrogen deficient soil so they eat insects the mutual relationship in which two different organisms live together and share the shelter and nutrients is called symbiotic relationship conversion of nitrogen gas from atmosphere into water soluble nitrogen compounds is called nitrogen fixation now we come to an end of this chapter one nutrition in plants i hope all of you must have understood everything but still if you have doubts you are free to ask thank you